I'm Scott Watkins and I'm the project leader for the Thin Film Photovoltaics work at CSIRO. CSIRO is the Australian Government Laboratories and we're an applied research agency working on technologies across a whole range of fields in Australia from materials, energy, environments through to space. The specific area that I work in is, our, is in our flexible electronics theme and we're developing the materials and processes to enable the manufacture of thin film electronics devices such as solar cells uh, and organic load emitting diodes and printed circuitry. We're doing this to build options for manufacturing in Australia to add to and to grow new areas in, in, that, in the manufacturing space and also to have an impact in the area of energy generation. So our work in thin film solar is basically divided into two parts. Our largest efforts are in organic photovoltaics where we're developing the organic materials and processes right through to printing. We also have an effort that we're growing in solution processed inorganic nanoparticles. And that involves technologies such as cadmium telluride and CZTS type cells, where we're developing new low cost processes to deliver more proven inorganic solar cell technologies. In, in our team, we've got chemists and material science scientists who are developing the, the inorganic nanoparticle based inks and then we're applying them in ways that builds on what we're doing with our organic photovoltaics about developing the processes for large area deposition. We've got a big focus in the organics on printing and just recently we've uh, taken delivery of printers that can now enable us to print organic solar cells up to A3 in size. And so we're doing that in a continuous roll to roll process. We're also looking at spray coating and that's of particular relevance to the inorganic technologies and again, this is a proven manufacturing process that is lower cost than the vacuum deposition that is used in traditional inorganic solar cells. And we believe provides options for manufacturers to enter into this area by lowering the barrier to entry for the technologies. So with the cadmium telluride devices, we're using this as the first technology where we're demonstrating the use of nanoparticles to make these inorganic solar cells. More recently, we're applying this to other areas such as the CZTS. But where this, how this works is we develop nanoparticle-based inks where, for example, with the cadmium telluride, our particle sizes are about four nanometers in size. We then do a, a layer by layer deposition that enables us to build up films that are not subject to cracking or, or defect forming. And we, a chemical and thermal treatment that happens in between these deposition processes results in the four nanometer particles growing into about 70 nanometer crystals. At that size, these crystals have similar properties to bulk cadmium telluride and the solar cells perform at levels of up to about 10% now. So we're taking these very small particles, formulating them in, into an ink and being able to deposit them all in air or from solution using uh, easy to handle chemicals. And that is this lower cost deposition process. So the technologies that we're developing are ink-based technologies where we dissolve the semiconductors up in these solvents and deposit them down by using conventional printing process and processes. And that's been a real key focus for us. We want to lower the barrier to entry for companies by making the equipment affordable to them. And so we're developing these processes to match printers that companies might already have. So we're using techniques such as reverse gravure or slot die coating and also spray coating to put the materials down. We've got a suite of printers now that we're using for our organic solar cells that can print up to 30 centimetres wide. And we're using the reverse gravure or the slot die to put down several of the layers. And then we use a screen printer to put down the, the top electrodes, whether it's a conducting polymer or, or the silver ink. And the screen printer is just like you would use for your, your T-shirts where we put it down. So this is like low cost. It's fairly quick. We can go up to about the, the machine's capable of going up to about 30 metres a minute. We haven't quite driven it that fast yet. But it enables to make these 30 centimetre wide devices and put things in the hands of people to show what they look and feel like and say, well, but for a, a little bit more work, we want to work with you to translate the expertise and the processes that we've developed onto either your existing equipment or something that's achievable with a fairly low level of investment. And whether it's depositing directly onto surfaces like steel or um, plastics or making a device and then laminating it onto an existing surface, there's a whole range of options there about changing the, the way that these things look and feel. And yes, they can be flexible, 
But in a lot of applications, we're really just talking about things that are conformable or lightweight or um, slightly different shape or, or feel than existing solar technologies. So there's a whole range of different applications that we can use and different features that we can use to build on to make these devices attractive to people. As far as applying the technologies, we see that there are a whole range of, of different applications where we can move beyond just the rooftop applications that have been targeted currently by existing manufacturers. The thin film technologies where we can apply them onto, for example, metal foils are attractive in market segments such as roofing, where the idea of building a totally integrated roofing material such that you're not adding solar panels onto the roof, but your whole roof is a, a power generating surface. And in that regard, one of the key partners in our organic solar cell work is Blue Scope Steel, who are the largest manufacturer of steel roofing in Australia and also have a significant presence around the world. As far as growing that market share, it's coming from a small base, so there's an opportunity to, to grow quite quickly. What we're doing is about adding to the existing range of manufacturing options that are out there. It's not a direct competition with any of the existing technologies or even a direct competition with silicon. Solar pro currently provides less than 1% of the world's electricity, so there's a lot of room for all of these other technologies to grow and occupy all uh, a variety of other areas of applications.